special moment here for Army Athletics in the Hall of Fame and being someone who obviously cares so much about Army football, lucky enough to work with the team and everything. Um, when Chuck had reached out to me um, several months ago, this was something that I had heard about and until he bought me the book on Amazon and I read through it in a, in a couple of days, um, it really, really hit home to me, this blood ball. I'd always heard about it um, through the years and how special the 77 team was. And if you're looking at me, I'm someone who just like loves the Army <laughs> history. So when I look back to the 77 team, I always think of that highlight film, right, which begins with the, the great Bob Outer, the true voice of Army football, um, <laughs> calling those final plays, right, where the defensive stop to, uh, to defeat Navy. And when we talk streaks, that was to break a streak back then, right? And obviously, the exploits of Lehman Hall passing the football. It represents a chance for the Army players to realize their dream. Lehman Hall, Clenny Brundage, and Greg King were possessed by that one dream, victory over Navy. temperature was near zero as a crowd of more than 81,000 awaited the kickoff in Philadelphia's Kennedy Stadium. The largest television audience of the season tuned in for college football's most spectacular show. Army's Lehman Hall makes his first pass attempt of the contest a big one. His long completion to Jim Merrigan does not lead to a score, but Army now knows it can move the ball against Navy. Second and 10 from the 17, Lashinsky throws for John Kurowski, but Army's chuck shot breaks up the play. 120 to go, Gattuso on the draw, tripped up by John Hilliard, shy of the first down. Fourth down on the Army nine, Joe Gattuso spots his man, the halfback option pass. Incomplete, Army stops the Navy drive. It was finally over. Four years of blood, sweat, and tears. Army beats Navy 17-14. For the seniors, their dream come true. For the underclassmen, their greatest reward. For the coaches, a job well done. For the record books, a 7-4 season, the best since 1968. A great king, 97-yard run. Was that senior day against um, yeah. Holy Cross, yeah, I want to say, was, right? The, and then we were going to call back to that with what Terry Baggett did right about a decade ago mm -hmm. in his 300-yard game against Eastern Michigan. But this blood ball really symbolizes, in so many ways, the brotherhood of Army football. And it can be defined so many different ways. But from, from knowing, you know, from getting to know Chuck, knowing members of this team and the commitment that was made before that season, um, this is going to be an amazing, amazing addition here um, to the Hall of Army Sports in the in the fighting the high tide cabinet, which I always feel is an era that doesn't get the the respect or notoriety. I forgot you should. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to put it too. But uh, it, it will sit proudly in there um, and have it. I'll work with Chuck Lehman, and whoever about a nice write up um, for um, the, the little car that'll go under it, and it. Um, it's something that's so special for me as someone who loves Army football and Army history, and I'm sure for all you guys who are all part of this. So, um, so thank you for this donation, and thank you to everyone uh, for being here. And with that, Chuck Lehman. Yep. Where are the Blood Brothers? Oh, right Come on here. up. Here. Come on up. Come on. These are our blood brothers who are still six feet above ground. <laughs> Please. So, uh, just trying to add a little color to, uh, you know, this event, and just to give it a little bit of a background. Uh, first of all, how many of you, b before you came this weekend, had really heard about what we did in 77 with Blood Ball and Black September? That's good. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's a <laughs> Well. <laughs> So, so this, this really started out because, you, you know, as you mentioned, we've gone five years without beating Navy. We had a few games where we really should have won, but we didn't know how to win. And we, we were on the cusp of, you, you know, being a, a good team. And, uh, you know, Chuck and I were elected captains and, uh, for the 77 team. And, uh, 
we said, hey, we, we got to find something. You know, you can call it a gimmick or whatever, but we got to find something that just really binds this team together and make a full team commitment. You know, because we all know that the weakest link in any chain is where it breaks. So we wanted to make sure that, A, there weren't any le weak, weak links and, and that everybody was fully committed. So, so what we did, uh, you know, and, and it's kind of funny because uh, if we tried to do this today, I would not recommend it for any <laughs> team going forward, okay? There may be some consequences. But uh, Chuck and I, we went to Dr. Protzman. You guys remember him? Yeah. yeah. Went to Dr. Protzman and said, Doc, we need uh, two vials of blood from each of us. So Chuck got two vials, I got two vials. And Dr. Protzman says, what for? And we said, don't ask. <laughs> no one enough. And by George, he did. He gave us two vials of blood. So we, what, what the whole concept was is that we wanted, you know, before our first game that year, we wanted to, uh, you know, start this, this, you know, really uniting of our team. So we invited the first team, the starting team for the first game, and the punter and the kicker. So 24 guys started. And uh, it was Derek Buckner. You remember when they bring you back and, and you doing all that stuff? Well, we said be on the 50 yard line at midnight. And this was on a Saturday night before we were going to go back at one. And uh, don't get caught. <laughs> be surreptitious as you can. And don't say anything. So these guys, these 24 guys came from every single area of the stadium. We met out there at midnight. And uh, it was an extremely dark, no moon night. And, you know, Chuck and I uh, kind of let them know why we were there. And it, it, uh, we were all going to basically make a blood oath as a team that we were going to leave it all on the field. So, so, uh, uh, so Chuck and I started off. We each uh, flipped our thumbs with a little razor blade. Uh, we, we made an oath to the team on what we would do as leaders and, you know, captains and in our respective positions. And, and then we ask each player to pair up, you know, offense, defense, just pick, pick it. And, uh, you know, two by two, they came up and did the same thing. And it was very emotional. I mean, you know, we had guys crying. We had guys admitting that, hey, you know, I haven't worked as hard as I should in the weight room. And, and you're going to see me more in the weight room. Somebody else saying, hey, you know, I, I, there's been games where I didn't really believe we were going to win. But, we're going to believe from here on out till the final whistle. So two by two, they did that. Well, then what we did with the uh, two vials of blood is uh, Chuck and I, we mixed them together in a bag, kind of symbolizing a, a bonding, a unity. And we all went to the visitor locker room. These stands. These stands. And we painted an A on the visiting locker room door in blood. Each guy, each guy dipped his finger in our blood. And this is why I'm saying I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so, uh, so it's been a very emotional night. So then, but the hard part was, okay, so now how are we going to extend this to everybody? So uh, Chuck and I, every, every week, we would figure out, you know, make an assessment on who was deserving of coming into this, uh, this elite group of guys. And we basically did it in twos based on performance of the game or, or the, the week's practice. And you had to earn it. And but Friday night before every game, home game or away game, we would meet uh, at a location that uh, we would let everybody know at a certain time. And it was generally after lights out. And it was very secret. Guys would come in. We would explain kind of what we we're explaining here, why we were there, and they would go through the same ceremony. And they'd cut their thumbs. They would make their commitments. And the whole goal was that by Navy, everybody who traveled to Navy would be quote unquote inducted uh, before the Navy game. Very emotional. And uh, uh, you know, so people oftentimes talk about uh, you, you know the DNA of a of a of, of a team. You know what what makes them. Well, our DNA is on it. <laughs> so. That was, that was basically the whole concept. And uh, no coach knew 
No train, Dickie, did you know? Well, you knew because you got us the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you might have been the only one who knew. You. But come, you know, after the season was over, and we kept it low key for many years. Uh, and and uh, no coaches knew, you know, nobody knew except for those, uh, what, 62 guys? And uh, so, so today, we, we, we had this ball, Homer had it for a few years, he gave it to me. I had it for a few years, I've given it to Chuck. So we wanted to kind of tell our stories and, and put it in because I, I think in, in a lot of ways it symbolizes our brotherhood. It symbolizes, uh, uh, you know, at least in our case, we, 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 needed, we needed an emotional advantage on our team. You know, we were, I wouldn't say we were outgunned, but you know, a lot of games we were playing outgunned, but we played with heart. And, uh, you never saw a team in 77 give up. Never. And before every kickoff, you would see Blood Brothers scrambling to find each other to shake hands before the game was over. Before the game was and, uh, uh, and I just want to thank all you guys for coming here and share it with you. Uh,